for study tonight. Um, a, about a month ago, I uh, wrote a, a post on my, on my blog uh, titled, uh, Praise is What I Do. And uh, Mike Jr., a couple of weeks ago, Mike Jr.'s study, maybe three weeks ago, was on praise, and he ended that, ended that study uh, saying that uh, uh, it's God's will that we, we praise him in all circumstances. So when he asked me to, if I would lead Bible study tonight, I felt I was led by the Holy Spirit to continue that study on praise. So if, if you want a subject for tonight's Bible study, it is... Praise is what I do. Uh, do. Do you remember, some of you will remember, uh, uh, most of you will remember the song that's written by a guy named William Murphy, and it is Praise is What I Do. And I'm going to give you the words to that, uh, that song at the end of the Bible study. If I had thought about it, I would have downloaded and burned a CD and played that for you tonight. But Praise is What I Do. Is a song written by William Murphy. And what it, what it essentially says is that's what I do, that's what I am. It's praise. That's who I am. It's praise. So that's, that's the subject tonight is praise is what I do. And I want to talk about what the Bible tells us about praise and specifically about praising God. Uh, one of the most important keys that make it possible for us to walk a victorious life is our expression of praise. As a matter of fact, the Lord's Prayer actually begins with an attitude of worship and praise. It, the, the, the Luke 11, 2, that's the Lord's Prayer in Luke. Uh, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. I, I have a lot of scriptures tonight. So if you have your Bibles, uh, try to try to try to find them, if not, just put, make some notes because they're going to be about praise. And these are things I suggest that from time that you read and meditate and even memorize that, that and will help you at times of your life where you really need to consider praising God. So Luke eleven two reads, so he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So essentially, that prayer opens with praise to, to God. It says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Praise to your name. Thanks to your name. Praise also is a command. It's not a request. In the Bible, praise is a command. If you turn to uh, Psalms 150, we all know that one. If you turn to 150, uh, we all know it. Matter of fact, I read it a lot of Sundays uh, before praise and worship. And that psalm actually reads like a command. I'm going to read it. it. Psalms 150, only six verses. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with crashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now that's a command to praise the Lord. As we know, really heaven itself is filled with praise. Take a look at Revelations chapter 19 and verses 5 and 6. Revelations 19, 5 and 6. That scripture reads, Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and the sound of, as the sound of many waters, 
and as a sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. That's praise. That, and, 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 and heaven is filled with praise. Heaven is filled with the angels and the multitudes, as according to John, praise God, and they praise him all the time. It's a constant praise. So it's heaven is filled with praise, and it's constant. So what is praise, really? What is, what is praise? Well, we all have an idea. But the uh, uh, dictionary definition of praise is to say or write good things about someone or something, to express approval of someone or something, and to express thanks to or love and respect for God. Yes, Houston. It's affirming as an affirmation, praising God, because it's saying a good thing. Okay, for those on the phone, uh, the Houston's question was, is an affirmation praise? Yes, some affirmations pra are praise, yes. In the affirmation, there's praise for to God, right? So syn synonyms for praise are admire, commend, honor, and worship. Those are synonyms for praise. Uh, now, man can be the object of praise, and it's really nothing, nothing necessarily wrong with praising a person. For example, we praise our children all of the time. We praise them for good grades. We praise them for being good children. Uh, we, we, uh, the definition I just gave you was to write or say good things about someone or something. So to praise a person, another person, individual, is not necessarily wrong. As a matter of fact, there are examples in the Bible where men were praised. Uh, one example is uh, what God said about Noah in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, it reads, these are the family records of Noah, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God. So that's something good about Noah. Um, in Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31, that's, that's, that's the, 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 the verse about the, virtu the chapter about the virtuous woman. Well, she's praised. If you look at verse 30 of that chapter, it reads, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. As a matter of fact, Jesus even praised people. Uh, when he was uh, uh, beginning his ministry and he was uh, uh, identifying people to be his disciples, uh, in, in the first chapter of John, um, uh, chapter 40, verse 47, it says, Then Jesus saw Nathanael. Now, Nathanael is also called Bartholomew. So Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and shouted and said about him, Here is a true Israelite, no deceit in him. He said good things about Nathanael. But now when we praise people, it should be in a God-centered way. Uh, by praising them for being godly or being Christ-like or commending them for God's glory, applauding them for doing for, for, for something that they've done good uh, that furthers the kingdom. Uh, and the reason we want to do it in a God-centered manner is because, you know, we're told not to put anything above God. But tonight, the object of praise I want to talk about tonight it is God. God is the object of the praise I want to talk about tonight. And we're going to talk about what the Bible says about why, when, and how we praise God. A, uh, a definition of Christian praise is, would be this. Um, the joyful thanking and adoring of God, the celebration of his goodness and grace. Now that definition really implies the, that praise is the act of, of, of making, joyfully thanking and adoring God. And there's a definition I want to give you from uh, the Holman Bible Dictionary, it's, it, and it's this. 
that praise comes from a Latin word meaning value or price. Thus, to give praise to God is to proclaim his merit or worth. Many terms are used to express this in the Bible, including glory, blessing, thanksgiving, and hallelujah. This also from the Holman Bible Dictionary. While the Bible contains frequent injunctions for people to praise God, there are also occasional warnings about the quality of the praise that we give him. Praise is to originate in the heart and not become a mere outward show. And that happens a lot of times in our churches during praise and worship. It's a show. It's an outward show and not from the heart. As a matter of fact, and so there's some warnings actually in the Bible about that kind of praise because it's really phony. Mm. Uh, Matthew chapter 15 verse 8. Uh, and this is Jesus saying this now. Uh, and he's saying this in response to the Pharisees. You remember when the Pharisees criticized uh, Jesus' disciples because they didn't wash before they ate? Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing with the Pharisees as a part of the law. And one of the things they added to the law. Uh, and so they were criticizing the disciples. Here's what Jesus said to the end of the response today. He said, these people draw near me with their mouth mm -hmm. and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So what he was saying about the Pharisees is what they were doing and saying was uh, was phony piety. And that our praise can be phony if it's not from the heart, if it's just a show. Um, praise also is linked to your lifestyle. Praise is also linked to your lifestyle, and there's some warnings about that as well. If you go to Amos, it's in the Old Testament, that's one of the minor prophets, so it's near the end of Amos, near the end of the Old Testament. Amos chapter 5, uh, verses 21 through 24. Amos 5, 21 through 24. And this is this is an example, a warning against. Praise that doesn't emanate from your heart or from a lifestyle that would, that it would, would give, bring God glory, uh, which is one of the synonyms for praise. Amos 5, 21 through 24 says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fatted peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. So your lifestyle should also exhibit an attitude or life of praise. Otherwise, according to this scripture, God says he won't accept them. Okay? Or he won't accept them. Praise again is not from the not from the heart or or from a lifestyle. Uh, so if your praise is contrary to the word of God, there's a warning that he won't even hear it. Praising God is not a feeling. Okay, praise is a conscious admiration and thanks for who God is and what He does. It has nothing to do with how you feel. Mm. It's an act of the will to praise God and, it's, and you praise him by thoughtfully celebrating his goodness, his greatness, his majesty, his love, his grace, and his mighty deeds on our behalf. The Bible says that his entire creation is to praise him. Okay, it says the angels are to praise him. If you want to go to Psalms 103, verse 20, that Psalm says, Bless the Lord. Yes. So Are you yes. So Psalms 103, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength 
who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. So the angels praise God. In Revelations, there's another reference to angels praising God. Revelations 5, uh, verses 11 and 12. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. That the angels praise God. All creatures and in, even inanimate things praise God. Uh, we, all know, we all know the scripture in Luke, Luke 1940. We all know that one and it you know, that's the one where, you know, when his triumphal entry, the, 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 they, they were, had the clothes all in the, in the road and they were yelling, hallelujah, uh, praise God, uh, 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 glory to the lamb who comes in the name of the Lord. I don't, I don't remember the exact, exact scripture, but remember the Pharisees said, Jesus, have these people shut up. And he, what did he say? Luke chapter 19, verse 40, he, it says, but he answered and said to them, I tell you, that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out in praise. Um, if you go to Psalms 19, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 19, 1 through 4. That... That reads the heavens, again, everything, God's entire creation praises him. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. So the heaven and all of the things in it. Praise God. Psalms 148 verses 10 through 13. I'm going through all of this stuff to talk about, to, so that we understand how important praise is. So important that when it's a command, all of creation praises him. Uh, uh, all of it. it verse uh, 148 10 through 13 reads beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. And verse 13 says, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. So. The angels, all the stuff in the creation, mm -hmm. praises God. But, and last but not least, for sure, the, the crowning jewel of God's creation, man, mm -hmm. is to praise him. So the Bible talks about the angels, it talks about the creatures, it talks about the rocks. But it's really primarily talking about and being concerned with the praises offered to God by man. Amen. Now there are hundreds of scriptures, and we're not going to do the whole tonight, but there are hundreds of scriptures in which man is encouraged to praise God. Mm -hmm. Many of them, perhaps most, are in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all going to look at a few, uh, and there are going to be some that you may not be familiar with. Just to give you an example of how significant and how important praise is. Psalm 7, verse 17. I'll give you a chance to write it down or look it up. But there are quite a few of them, so I want to go kind of fast. But Psalm 7, verse... Psalm, huh? You are going a little fast. Am I? Okay. Well, it's, it's being recorded, so you can get it. But I got to get through in an hour. 
Psalm 7, verse 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalms 9, verse 2. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. There are other places in the Bible, and if you go through Psalms, there are a lot of them. I'm not going to go through all of those, but I want to give you just an, an, a, a, some samples. There's, there are some other places in the Bible that you don't, we don't think about praise, but praise is this important. If, if you look at, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, verse in 2 Samuel, uh, and it's in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 4. And that verse reads, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. In Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1, it reads, O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you, I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. And I'm going to give you one more, and then we're going to talk about some things as to why we should praise God and, and, and ways that we can praise God. I want to give you one more scripture, though, on praise, and that's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And that's uh, this, resist, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, there, but remember, there are hundreds of scriptures in the Bible about praise. So if you want to, if you want to, if you're down sometimes, down in the dumps, and you want to you want to feel better about yourself then praise God look in a Bible that has a concordance look at, at praise and just go down it go down every one of those scriptures or go on the internet and Google praise and you will find hundreds of verses on praise meditate on them memorize them memorize them so when things get tough They'll come to you. you. Get them out of your memory bank and you'll feel better because uh, praise causes you to feel better. Because praise, when you praise God, it takes the focus off of you mm -hmm. and off your circumstance yes. and puts the focus on God. Right. That's what praise does. You're praising him for what he's done for you. You praise him all, all, for all the good things he's done. You praise him for who he is and it takes the focus off of you right. and off your circumstance and puts it on him and then you will, then the circumstance, the problem doesn't seem small at all. It's minuscule. Mm. Then it's minuscule. So why should we praise God? Well, we want to praise him, of course, uh, uh, to show thanks for what he's done for us and for those who we love. Uh, we want to, it, and it praises, acknowledges him as the creator and the one who holds everything together. We praise him because he's worthy of our praise. But just important is what I said a minute ago. Just important as that is, just as important in my opinion, it's just as important that praise takes the focus off of ourselves and puts it on God. That's it. We praise God for who he is, for his attributes. He is, God is full of glory. Okay? God is full of glory. One of, one of, one of the scriptures that, that, that talks about uh, God's glory is Psalms 138, verse 5. That verse is, they will sing of the Lord always, for the Lord's glory is great. 
Okay? We praise God because of his peace full of glory. We praise him because he's great. As I just said, if you go to Psalms 145 verse 3, we'll tell you that Yahweh is great and he is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. His, the greatness of God, you can't imagine. It's more than we can even imagine. And we praise him because of that. We praise him because he's wise and he's powerful. You remember when Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, right? None of his wise men, it was when, when, uh, in Babylon, none of, the, none of his wise men could interpret the dream. So he said, hey, if you guys cannot figure this out, I'm going to kill all of you. I'm going to execute you all, right? Well, Daniel was considered, and, and, and his three partners were considered wise men, and he was going to be killed too, right? Uh, however, he prayed, he and his, and his, and his, and his posse prayed, and God gave them inter the interpretation of the dream. Well, Daniel praised God. Daniel chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, were Daniel's, uh, Daniel's, uh, was Daniel's praise. He said, the mystery, was, the, the verses read, the mystery was then revealed to Daniel in a vision at night. And Daniel praised the God of heaven. And here's what he declared. And he declared, may the name of God be praised forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him. So we praise God because he's wise and he's powerful. He's merciful and he's faithful. That's another reason to praise God. He's merciful and he's faithful. David said this in, in, in a Psalms, uh, Psalms 89 verse 1. Reads, I will sing about the Lord's faithful love forever. I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations with my mouth. We praise him because he's merciful and he's faithful. He's wise and he's powerful. He's merciful and he's faithful. He's full of glory. He's great, right? We praise him for his works, for his wonderful works. Amen. Okay? And Psalm 150 tells. Psalms 150 tells you that a, a lot. We praise God for his wonderful works. Psalms 150 verse 2 is, says, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, right? So we praise God for his wonderful works. All right? We also praise him because God is the one who saves us. Mm -hmm. Psalms 18 verse 46 is this. The Lord lives, may my rock be praised. The God of my salvation is exalted. Okay? We praise him for his works. We praise him because he's the one who saves us. We praise him because he's merciful and faithful. We praise him because he's powerful and wise. We praise him for his glory. We praise him for his greatness. We praise him because he forgives sin. Right? Right? All right, Psalms 103, verses 1, 1 through 3. Here's the way they read. Uh, it, my soul praise Yahweh and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. My soul praise the Lord and do not forget all his benefits. He forgives you all your sin and heals all your diseases. He forgives sin. We praise him for his works. We praise him because he saves us. We praise him because he's wise and powerful. We praise him because he's merciful and faithful. We praise God because he keeps his promises. Amen. Right? Uh, all right. Amen. All right. Uh, First Kings ch chapter 8, uh, verses 56 and 57. Okay, this is uh, 1 Kings 8, 56 and 57. This is Solomon. 
says, may the Lord be praised. He has given rest to his people Israel according to all he has said. Not one of all the good promises he made through his servant Moses has failed. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he not abandon or leave us. And that's what it said in Kings. Now what it says uh, in, in Hebrews that he would never leave us or forsake us, right? We praise him and he keeps that promise, right? We praise him because he keeps his promises. We praise him because he provides for us. That's another reason to praise him because he provides for us. Uh, we, all, we all know uh, uh, Jesus' comments in Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33. Uh, that's the one where he says, don't worry about anything. You know, mm-hmm. Think about the, the, the birds and, and, and uh, the flowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Uh, it says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So God provides for us. So we praise him. Mm-hmm. You know Paul when he wrote to Philippians said that, that uh, uh, my God will supply all, all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we praise God for that. Now, to try to list all the reasons to praise God is impossible. We cannot list all of the reasons to praise God. As a matter of fact, you can probably think of some I haven't mentioned tonight. You know, he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. He's our creator. He's our provider. He's our healer. He's our redeemer. He's our our judge. He's our defender. And we can go on and on and on. And it's a great exercise, as a matter of fact. It's a great exercise to try to list all the reasons to praise God. Because, again, that keeps us mindful of how much He's done for us. It puts our focus on him and takes it off of us. Mm. Right? Now, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of ways to praise God too. Uh, That list is almost endless too. Mm -hmm. But we can talk about a few of those tonight. Uh, you know, singing songs and hymns and clapping our hands and jumping for joy. Those, those are ways to praise God. So we can praise God using our feet, our limbs, our hands, uh, our hearts, mm-hmm. and our minds, and our deeds. We can praise God with our hearts and our minds and the things we do. But they should always result in the acknowledgement of God's love and his grace and his power. So he, here are a few. We can praise God with sacrifices. You know, before Jesus came and became the last sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, uh, the, uh, in the wilderness and when, when they reached Canaan, uh, the offering of sacrifices by the people were a way to praise God. Right? Uh, Leviticus, in Leviticus, uh, all the rules uh, about sacrifice and in Deuteronomy. But those sacrifices were a way to praise God. As a matter of fact, Paul says, right, in Romans, Paul says in chapter 12, verse 1, what does he say? Somebody here read that. What does that say? Chapter, Paul, chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Yes, right. that's that's the one. Go ahead and read it. Good, loud. I knew it, but I had it on the Well, let me read it. Let me read it. Uh, we all know what it is. I, I, I won't hear you. Can't hear you, Gail. But Gail's got it. It says, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So we can praise God with the sacrifice 
of ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's that's praise. But we can praise God with sacrifice. We can, of course, praise him with dance, movement, and dance. You remember remember David, right? You remember when David uh, came back and danced after bringing the Ark of Covenant back? He was praising him when he danced out of his clothes. Okay, <laughs> we, we, can, we can praise him with dance. We can even praise God with silence and meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, in Psalms uh, chapter 77, uh, verses 11 and 12, this is uh, uh, also uh, a way that we can praise God. Uh, 77, 11 and 12 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of all your deeds. Remember, praise is an expression of devotion and adoration for someone or something. So we can praise God in silence and in meditation. Okay, we can praise him with our testimonies. Pastor has testimonies on Sundays sometimes and we have it we have we have praise reports we call it praise reports or testimony we even call it praise reports don't we we start Bible study with praise reports we start uh, we have praise reports on Thursday night uh, we have praise reports uh, uh, on some Sundays uh, some people call them testimonies or testimony, okay uh, so we can praise God with that uh, Psalm 66 verse 16 says come and hear all you who fear God and declare what he has done for my soul but when we declare what God has done for us that's praising him we can praise him with our testimony we can praise God with prayer Okay, we can praise him with we can praise him with prayer. Uh, the, the verse in Philippians that we all know says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, which is praise, let your requests be made known to God." So we can praise God with with prayer. We can praise him with music. Uh, as a matter of fact, praise is often associated with music, whether it's structured. Like in praise and worship, or whether it's in a personal quiet time when we're quiet and we're listening, or we're singing, uh, or it can be a spontaneous outburst of thanksgiving. Um, Psalm 150, you know, we talked about when you, we read that, we, we read it in the beginning, uh, and we'll read it again. That's all about music. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him with his, in in His mighty firmament. Praise Him with His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. And here we go with the music. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals, and then let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we can praise him with music, and we do that here. We have a great band, and so we sometimes just let the band play. Well, what that is, it's not just, and since we're we're praising him with music. Um, Now, here's what's important, though. Those are always with your life. Everybody, well, almost everybody, agrees that praise is good, right? Uh, when, when we're happy, we praise God. But when we're not happy, we don't praise God, oh. right? We pray. Mm. I say we should do both, but uh, we can praise God when we're not happy. As a matter of fact, the scriptures tell us to praise him even when things aren't great, when it says uh, be thankful, give thanks in all things, well, okay, that means give praise in all things. Uh, when, when things aren't going good, we don't feel the responsibility to praise God. We think that praise is just a response to what happens, but it's not. It's not. Philippians 4.4 Philippians 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Praise is not what happens afterwards. Praise is what goes before. Mm. Let me repeat that again. Praise is not what happens 
afterwards. Mm -hmm. Praise is what happens before. Uh, here's a little statement I found as I was studying. It said, praise is the engine that causes everything else to move. Okay. Okay. You, you, you remember Paul and Silas? And I think Mikey uh, used this uh, example when, in his Bible study. Remember Paul and Silas when they were in jail? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Uh, that's in Acts chapter 16, verses 20 through 10, 22 through uh, 26, or actually 25 is where I want to get. But Paul and Silas were in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, let me read 22 through 26, Acts 16, 22 through 26. Okay. Then the multitudes rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with cords. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure, to keep them secure. Now, that doesn't sound like anything to praise anybody about, does it? <laughs> does it? Having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet to the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Okay? They praised the chains weren't loosed and the prison wasn't shaken until after they had prayed, right. praised him. Right? Sing songs of praise. It was after that that stuff happened. All right. Okay, your faith, actually our faith in God affects us as it affects God's. Okay, God. Our faith is enhanced with our praise. How, how, why do I say it affects God? How can I say that? Well, <laughs> we go to Psalms 22 verse 3. Here's what it says about our praise. It says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise of Israel. So, God inhabits our praise. So our praise does affect God. It doesn't cause God to change his mind. It doesn't cause God to, you know, cause, because God already knows what's going to happen. But he inhabits our praise. I mean, God is a part of our praise. Praise touches everything and every part of our lives. As a matter of fact, a lack of praise affects us in a negative way. Okay? Okay? Because when we don't praise, we're concerned about ourselves and we look at our situation and it's all me and my and my oh me, oh my, oh this, oh that. So when, we, so when we don't praise, that's where we are. But when we praise God, mm -hmm. the focus now is on him and not us. As a matter of fact, if praise and thanksgiving, and I really believe this, if praise and thanksgiving isn't a part of your life, you're probably not spiritually healthy. Mm -hmm. You're probably not healthy spiritually mm. if, uh, if praise and thanksgiving is not a part of your life. Amen. When you're in the dumps and something happens and causes stress and worry, try praising God. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. Okay? The focus is not on you anymore. The focus is on God. When, you, when the focus is on God, you start to remember what he's done for you mm. in the past. Yeah. You remember in praise, when you praise God, you remember that nothing is impossible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for God. You, you remember the reasons that were all mentioned before. All right, you know, he's right. powerful. Yeah. He, he forgives sin. He saves us. You remember all those things when you praise God. Yeah. It's a, that's why I say it's a good idea to memorize. Go back and look at some of those scriptures I gave you and others. It's a good idea to memorize as many of those scriptures about praise as you can. Yeah. So when stuff happens, and it will, mm -hmm. okay, you can get that stuff out of your memory bank. It's easy to praise God when things are going good. It's mm -hmm. really easy. Mm -hmm. But it's tough to praise him when things are going bad. So it's got, it's got to be an act 
of your will to praise God when things are going bad. Praise is not the thing that goes that comes when everything goes wrong with our life. Lives. When you have a life of praise, okay, when you live a life of I'm talking about now, living a life of praise. Praise God in everything that happens. Take the focus off of ourselves and put it onto God. When you live a life of praise, then you can do what it says do in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. You, then you can do this. When you live a life of praise, you can rejoice always, mm -hmm. pray constantly, giving thanks in everything, yeah. for this is the will for you, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You can also do what it says in Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 7. When you have a life, when you live a life of praise, when praise is what you do, right? Mm -hmm. You can rejoice in the Lord always. It says again, I will say it again, rejoice. Mm -hmm. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. But in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, that's praise, let your requests be made known to God. And then, and the peace of God which surpasses every thought will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise is a vital part of life, of, of a life centered or surrendered, surrendered, I'm sorry, to God because it gives credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. It gives a credit to God. That's where it's due. Um, where, that's where the credit is due. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 is, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in sin, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to God. That's praise, okay? Praise is your ultimate, really think about this now, praise is your ultimate destiny. Remember what I said earlier about what happens, and pastor talks about it all the time, what goes on in heaven constantly? It's praise, constantly, constantly, constantly. Okay, your ultimate destiny, right? It, when Christ returns, right, to earth, all creation, including those who are not saved, including unbelievers, will recognize his glory and praise him. Mm. How can I say that, right? How can I say it? Well, go to Philippians. Mm. Go to Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 9 through 11. And eventually, everybody mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is going to praise God. So you might as well start now, because yep. eventually it's going to happen. And if, once you're with him, once he returns, and we're with him always, it's your destiny to praise him. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore... God is highly exalt, has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow yeah, yeah. of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's your destiny. So when you live a life of praise then praise is who you are mm. and what you do. Mm -hmm. Here's the song. Like I said, if, if I had thought about it before, I would have brought it and so we could hear it. But this is a song that many, most of us know. It was written by a guy named William Murphy, and the song is Praise is What I Do. Mm. Okay, Hear the words of that song. I'll praise you whether happy or sad, I'll praise you. In all that I go through, because praise is what I do, because I owe it 
all to you. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I will bless him at all times. And here's the chorus again. And I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. I'll praise you. Praise is what I do even when I am going through. I've learned to worship you. Through my circum- though my circumstances don't even stand a chance, my praise outweighs the bad. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all times. So praise, think about this. Praise When you live a life of praise and really understand what God has meant to you and what he is to you, then you will praise him with your life. Mm -hmm. And when you praise God with your life, that is that is what you do. That's who you are. And if that's who you are and what you do, then what that is shines as a light that shines to others. And others will want to know, what is this about you? And you can tell them that praise is who I am and what I do, and this is why. And you talk about then about God's love for them, uh, his gift of his son, who sacrifice now is, 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 to, is to pardon their sin so that they can now approach God because, because he sees his son, he sees Jesus in them, and now they can become praise. Praise is what they can become and what they can do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Yes, Lord. For your word. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord God, for, 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 for your sacrifice. Thank you for your son, Heavenly Father, who has came and gave his life for us. Yes, Heavenly Lord. Father, thank you, Lord God, that you have put in us a desire to praise you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have put in us the, your word, your word which, is, which, which, which tells us how to praise you and, and what to say to praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for that. Praise is what we, who we are, Lord God. And what we do. And we thank you, Lord God, for that. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that for those that were on that joined us tonight with with the, the Bible study. We ask, Lord God, that that this word that that you place in me to give to them, Heavenly Father, will permeate their hearts and their minds. Because it means nothing if it doesn't. If they just heard it, it sounds good. But if it didn't permeate their hearts and their minds, it doesn't do anything. When we pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will will cause them to remember Mm -hmm. what you gave tonight and cause them to act out what you gave them tonight so that praise becomes what.